began Wednesday. And the title of the series is Perfecting Our Faith. Perfecting Our Faith. And I used a subtopic from Wednesday called Faith Puts Us in Command. Faith Puts Us in Command. And um, I want to continue with that same subtopic as well today. So this, again, this will be part two of our series, uh, Perfecting Our Faith. And the subtopic is faith puts us in command. So let's let's open our Bibles today to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12. And let's also find 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hebrews 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Amen. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> let me uh, let me read uh, these two verses into your hearing and just kind of recap a little bit of what we what we began on Wednesday and and uh, we just believe and trust the Spirit of God to to open up His Word to us even more. Uh, the the overall objective in this particular message or series is to. Uh, is to help us remove the hindrances to our faith. Amen? To help us remove the hindrances to our faith in order that we can receive from God and truly command our world. Think about that. Think about that. Faith puts you in command of your world, not the circumstances, Amen. not the circumstances. Amen? Amen. The body of Christ has got no business being dictated to by circumstances. No, the world and all of whatever's going on in it is supposed to adjust itself to us as we exercise our faith in our walk with God. But, but there are some things that can hinder our faith or some things that can contaminate our faith, such as fear, uh, strife. Um, and so these things got to be dealt with. They got to be removed uh, so that we can, we can actually uh, run the race that God has, has assigned us to run. Amen? Amen? So in Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, that, that, uh, that same verse in the Passion Translation says, we look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus. See, each of us have a, have a race that God has assigned to us, a particular course, if you will, uh, that we're to follow. And so when we talk about, when I use these terms, race or course or what have you, ultimately that's speaking of God's plans and purposes for us. That would have to do with our calling, our assignment in the kingdom of God, right? And so each of us have a purpose. Each of us have an assignment, right? And so we have all been called to run a race. We've all been assigned a course, if you will, a portion in the overall plan of God and his will being done in the earth. Each of us have a part to play in that. And so in order to fulfill our part, we, we, we must look to Jesus. We can't run our race. We can't fulfill our purpose looking to this natural realm for answers and for help. So, so the passage translation in verse 2 says we run the race looking away from this natural realm. Amen. See the, see, the wisdom of this world has conditioned us to look to the natural realm to look to the wisdom of man without the benefit of the Holy Ghost for our answers, right? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me give you an example. Uh, uh, just think of this. Think about, think about Google. 
How often do you Google something when you want an answer? How often do you go online when you want to know about something? And I'm not, I'm not putting Google down. I'm just saying Google ain't God. So you got to understand that, that Google uh, is, the, the, whatever Google has to say, man told it what to say. It got it from, from, from the wisdom of men. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so, so the body of Christ was not called to, to live by the wisdom of fallen man, but the wisdom of a risen Lord. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so, so we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't fall into the same trap uh, as the world and yoke ourselves up to the same evil thereof by trusting in the same wisdom that it trusts in. Are you understand what I'm saying? So we have to we have to look away from this natural realm. We have to look to the Lord Jesus with hope and expectation that He's all that we need. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? See, oh Lord, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me be kind and sweet. Hallelujah. But the, but there's some things that there's some things that just irk me. Um, and, and, uh, it, 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 I think, I think, I think some folk call it righteous indignation. Uh, there, there ought to be some things that bother you, um, that you ought not just be okay with everything that's going on. It, it, the, 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 the heart beat of God is in you. You have access to his thoughts, right? And so when you encounter situations and circumstances and you hear about things that go contrary to that, it ought not be okay with you, especially when that stuff knock on your door and tries to, tries to dictate the, the quality of your life. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? But see, if you don't know you have victory over it, you'll accept it. And so, so, so these things hinder and hurt our faith, all right? So, so, so go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Look, look at verse 4 and 5. Paul is speaking now by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, as my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. And see, that's a big problem in the church today. The vast majority of preachers this day, this hour speaking or will be speaking their own personal philosophies as opposed to the revealed truth of God's word. They will be expounding on the wisdom of man as opposed to the revealed truth of God's word. So Paul says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? So that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of of God in the power of God and our faith must be in the power of God now let me read a few things to you uh, just like I said in, in just kind of a, a brief uh, uh, summary of catching us up from from Wednesday and as I, I, as I said the subtopic and it is faith puts us in command right it um, it, it enables us to command the affairs of our lives. It, it enables us to influence the outcomes that God intended. Are you understand what I'm saying? With our faith, we're in a place of command. We're in a, we're in a place where we're actually able to influence the outcomes of, of, of our world. Are, are y'all following what I'm saying? So, so in other words, in other words, if, if, if you understand what I'm saying and you agree with what I'm saying, that ought to, you ought to be excited now because your, through your faith in God, you can exert governing influence over the evil conditions present in your life right now and change the outcome. Glory to God. I mean, think about this now. We, we, with 
with the words given you by God coming out of your mouth coupled with corresponding action, you can change. You can influence the outcomes in your world. Hallelujah. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, 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 this, so faith puts us in command, so whereby we can actually influence the outcomes that God intended or ordained for us or that which God wills for us. Um, so, but, but God is just waiting on us. Listen now. He's waiting on us to just to take possession of his plans and purposes for our lives. We have to take ownership of the plans and purposes that God has for our lives. A lot of times in, in our everyday affairs, we, we create a plan. We formulate a plan. We come up with good ideas that we're trying to run with and implement because reasonably speaking, they seem like they will meet the objective that we have. But the problem is we're simply following a course of reasoning without the benefit of the Holy Ghost, hoping God will bless it so it will meet the desired end. But, but see, that's, that's, that's what he, uh, Hebrews said. Don't run your race looking to this natural realm. We got to run looking away from this natural realm to Jesus, to the word. Right? He's the author and finisher of our faith. The passion translation says he is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Right? Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so God, God has his own plans and purposes. And so in order for his plans and purposes to be fulfilled in our life, Right? We've got to take ownership. We've got to possess those plans and purposes as our own. Are, are you following what I'm saying? So, so just say this. I got I to gotta take possession of what God has planned for me, of what God has purposed for me. I must take ownership of, and I must manage it. I must command my affairs according to God's plans and purposes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, oh, Lord. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm, because I, 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 I get a glimpse of this stuff and I, and, and, and it's resonating on the inside of me and, and, I, I can anticipate the end result, and I want so badly for you to get it. Uh, but, 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 but sometimes when I look out, I just see this look on the face. Oh, like, like, I wish he'd hurry up. And then it, <laughs> You, it's so, see, it's some things you, you can't rush revelation because, because God builds upon it line upon line. And see, the first statement might not mean too much to you, but it's necessary by the time the fifth statement comes. You're going to need the first statement to add validity and understanding to the fifth one. And then by the time you get to the eighth one, you got some understanding where you can see this thing. But it comes, and it comes by utterance and revelation of the Spirit of God. And that's why I say you got to make a decision as to why you came today. Did you come just out of a religious practice because it's Sunday? Or did you come to hear answers for your life? Are you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Okay, so, 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 all right, all right, all right. Go to Isaiah 46. Go to Isaiah 46. Look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not preaching some fairy tale to you, some pipe dream in the sky. I'm giving you what thus saith the Lord. I mean, it, now, now, you got to determine what, what, what weight that carries with you. What weight does God's word carry with you? Is it final authority? Do you receive it as final authority? Or do you just receive it as, I hear one man say it this way. He just looks at the Bible kind of like, uh, uh, how do you put it? He said he, he doesn't take it literally to live by. He looks at it as, as uh, 
some basic guidelines that you can pick and choose. You, you understand what I'm saying? And see, 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 uh, while many of us would not consciously say those words the way we treat it, it's like we have that same attitude. And I'm not fussing. I'm just trying to help us, man. I'm, I'm trying to help. See, see, his, see, 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 God, <laughs> if he, he jerked the slack out of me, you know I'm going to jerk the slack out of you. That's how it works. He jacked me up, I got to jack you up. He correct me, I got to correct you. He, he enlightened me, I got to, that's my job. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So in Isaiah 46, are you there? Look at verse 9 and 10. Woo! Glory to God. Look at this, look at this. Look at verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Now listen, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I am God and there is none like me. Hallelujah. See that, that see that. That's what inspired that song where I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Look how I look low. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. See, there is none like God. There's no greater solution than this word. There's nothing better to live by than this word. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, now listen now. Look, look, look what he says. He says, he says, that there's none like me. And he says, the, the, our God, he declares the end from the beginning. Does that sound like he influences the outcome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now look. Uh, the Amplified says declaring the end and the result from the beginning. Right? He says declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. So there's some things God has ordained and purposed for your life that are not yet done and fulfilled in your life, but because he declared them, he's saying my counsel's gonna stand and I'm gonna do all that I purposed and pleased for you. Yeah, yeah. So you can't get distracted and caught up with how it looks and feels in the middle. You gotta run on and see what the end gonna be, as the old folks say. You got to keep walking by faith. If you're going through the valley, don't stop and hang out. Keep going through and get out. Because there's a promise in result that God has declared from the beginning for your benefit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Now, look what he says. Thank you, Lord. He says, my counsel shall stand you see that yeah. my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure the amplifier says my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure and purpose so counsel then what's he talking about my counsel will stand <clears throat> when you when you when you study that out when he says my counsel will stand he's saying that all that I've purposed, all that I've ordained, all the good I originally intended for man, all that, it, he's saying it's going to stand. Listen, all of the answers that earth is in need of, that God has purposed for the earth, will stand. All of the healing that he intended for us will stand. All of the provision. He, he's saying everything that I've purposed and ordained for your life will stand. All that I've purposed and ordained for the earth will stand. In other words, there's nothing that's going to change it. There's nothing that's going to stop it. There's nothing that's going to overturn it. Are you understand what I'm saying? 
let me, let me, think I, let me, let me say it this way. Uh, the, the, the council, right? So, so this equates to, to all that he's purposed, all that he's ordained for us, right? Now listen, this refers to all that we are to take possession of. All his counsel, his counsel will not stand. All that he's purposed and ordained for us and our welfare and our well-being that we are to possess and take ownership of, that's, that's going to stand. So, so, so let, let's get a little bit more specific. When we talk about plans and purposes, we're talking about your, your gifts and callings. We're talking about your assignment. Right? Now, don't get quiet now. Each of us each of us have an assigned place in the body, and God has planted us in the body as he please, as it pleases him, as it pleases him, according to the assignment on our life, right? So, so, so all that God has called us to be and do, all that he has assigned us to, right, these things. This is his counsel that shall stand. Are you following me? But now listen, 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 listen. In other words, each of us have a part to play in what God ordained to come to pass and come to pass. Each of us have a part to play in causing what he purposed to come to pass to come to pass. Each of us have an assigned part to play in his will coming to pass in the earth. Now he says, my counsel is going to stand. All our purpose on the name, it's going to stand. I'm going to do as, I, as, as, as my pleasure, right? But each of us have, a, have an assigned part to play. Each of us have a responsibility concerning what he's ordained coming to pass. Each of us have a responsibility, an assignment concerning that, right? Now listen. If his counsel is going to stand and it's not going to be overturned, if what he's purpose and plan is going to stand and not be overturned, and we all have a responsibility to play a part in it being done, yes, yes. if what he purpose is not going to be overturned, your, your, your assignment in that, the part you're to play in that, is not going to be excused. In other words, if what he's purpose and plan to come to pass is going to stand, in other words, his, 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 it's still his will for it to be, and that's not going to change, then the fact that we are not playing our part is not going to, is not going to stand. And that's not going to wash. We, we're going to be held accountable for the part he assigned us in what he ordained coming to pass in the earth. Or let me say it this way in light of Hebrews 12. We're each going to be responsible for the race he's assigned us to run. For the course he's called us to follow. We're each going to be responsible because our race and our our race is our part in what he's purpose coming to pass. So if I don't run my race and if I don't do my part, then I'm hindering what he purposed from coming to pass. But, and even if I'm hindering because he says it's going to stand, he's not going to change his mind just because I ain't doing my part. So when, I, when my time in the earth is up and I stand before him in judgment, I'm going to be judged by him for, for what he called me to do. I, 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 I'm not, we're not going to stand judgment over sin. That's already been judged. We're going to stand judgment over what we did with our part. Over how faithful we were to command our affairs. Yes, yes. But before I can command my affairs, before I can do the part that he's called me to do, I got to possess it. I got to take ownership of it. I have to assume that responsibility. Yes. Oh, Jesus. And, and so, so what happens oftentimes is 
uh, oftentimes we have to grow to a certain level of maturity before God can even reveal some of the particulars of the purpose. Because, 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 <laughs> It's, 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 like, it's like what he said over in, what is it, Galatians 5? It was it Galatians 4? Where it says, uh, the son, he, 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 even though he's a, a, a lord over all, if he's, if he's still a child, his life doesn't differ any from a, from a slave. Are you understand? So, so, so in other words, he's an heir. He's the heir uh, and lord and master of the entire state. He's lord over all. He's Lord over all. He's Lord over all. He's, he has supreme authority over the entire state, being that he's the heir. But because he's yet childish and immature in his understanding, he can't take possession of his inheritance in his fullness because he's not yet at a place of maturity where he's responsible enough to manage it. And there are certain aspects and levels to what God has called us to do, what he's assigned us to do, the race he's called us to run, that we need constantly to be growing and maturing in the things of God to be able to understand it and have sufficient, and to be able to, to manage it or, or command it. Are y'all following me? Y'all right? All right, so, 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 so the counsel, the plans and purposes of God, right? All that he's prepared and ordained for us that we're to take possession of by faith and that we're to command, right? And thereby influence the outcomes of our world. Now, can, can, in light of what I'm saying, can you, can, could, could, could you see that we're talking about a particular reality that God has purposed for us that is distinguishably different than the reality that the world lives. Right? Y'all follow me? So, so this reality then is an eternal reality. Say eternal. It has no beginning. It has no end. Right? And since it's eternal, it can't be overturned. It can't be changed. It can't be stopped. Right? Y'all follow me? This eternal reality is, is, it has its origin or its existence in the spirit realm, the unseen realm of the spirit. Y'all follow me? Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all make, I'm trying to, I'm, y'all, y'all see that? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at your neighbor and say, you praying for pastor? Are you there? 2 Corinthians 4. So we're talking about all of the counsels of God, the plans and purposes of God, all that he has ordained for the family of man, all the good that he has purposed and ordained for the earth, all the answers that, that, he is, that heaven has for the earth, all all that God originally intended to be, the, uh, all right, the reality he originally intended for the earth shall stand. It's an eternal reality. It's an unseen reality. It, it's an eternal reality that has its origin in the unseen realm of the spirit, right? Right? Y'all with me? You in 2 Corinthians 4? All right, now look, look, at, look with me at verse 17. For our light affliction, say light affliction. Light. Now this light affliction is, 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 is the evil conditions and circumstances that we're facing in the earth, in the natural realm, right? He says our light affliction, say light affliction. See, a lot of times we're tempted to think that our situation is too big, that it's so big, that it's too big for God. No, the first step in, in growing in faith is to agree with the word of God concerning your situation. He said it's a light thing. I don't care what the diagnosis is. I don't care what the status is. I don't care what the prognosis is. God said it's a light thing. You need to say this, this, this ain't but a light thing. All right? He says, now, now look, now look. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, but for a moment, 
worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. We're not focused up on the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporary. They can be changed. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So we are to consider and give our, 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 our attention to the eternal reality that is not presently seen because it's eternal. And by considering it, by, by looking at it, right, the light affliction works for us and we're far eternal way to glory. All right, all right, wait, wait, wait. Help me, Lord. A far more eternal weight of glory. Okay. All right, so it, this, this light affliction is not going to work for me a far more, more eternal weight of glory if I'm focused on the affliction, the things that are seen. But it works a far more eternal weight of, of glory for me if I focus on the things that are not seen. What is not seen? The reality God promised me. That which he's purposed and ordained for me. From the foundations that he could declare from the beginning. That shall stand. That's what I'm to give my attention to. That's what I'm to give my focus. I'm to give my attention to the promises that he has, that he has made me. To the good that he has ordained for me. Even though it's not presently seen in the natural realm, I'm to look at it. How do I look at what I can't see? I look at the word that is the seed of it. I look at the promises of God, for they are the seed of those things. And so as I give consideration and meditation to what he promised me, I'm giving consideration to the reality that he intended and ordained from the foundation and declared from the beginning. And by focusing on that which is the truth, my mind is being renewed to where my perspective, my, my perception, my perspective, my outlook, what I think about it, what I believe about it, what I say about it, what I do about it is becoming aligned with what God intended, with what he ordained with what he declared from the beginning. And as I possess that as mine and begin to speak and act accordingly, I release the power necessary to change the problems that are currently going on to bring them to naught. So the end result is a far more weight of glory. Let, let me get, all right, let me give you an example. Like, like say, for example, uh, if I go over to uh, my daughter's middle school and challenge somebody to a game of basketball and I beat them, I don't get no whole lot of glory out of that because they little kids. You follow me? But if I go down there, if I go down there, Charlotte, and call Mike out on the floor and beat him, now I'm going to get some glory because Mike the man. You understand what I'm saying? My, 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 my. So, so, so listen, listen, listen. The affliction that's present, right? The Bible says it's but for a moment. So that means at some point, there's an end to that affliction. Now the question is, when the end comes, will you be in the victor circle? Or will you be at the mercy of the affliction? See, one gives you a far more weighty, more eternal glory. The other is you're at the mercy of it. So in other words, testings, trials, and temptations, they show up. They come. Big deal. But Jesus said, be a good cheer. I've defeated it. I've, I've, I've conquered the world and defeated it. I've deprived it of the ability to do you any harm. That's the eternal, that's the truth that's eternal, that I can, I can take what he promised me and change what I'm seeing so that, and influence the outcome to be what God intended and declared from the beginning. But I can't do it until I possess it. I got to, I got to, you, you, you and I have to take ownership 
over what God has made us responsible for. And he has made you and I responsible for our lives. Now, now listen, listen, let me, let, me, let me clear it up. When I say he's made us responsible, he's made us responsible to command the affairs that he put us over. That counsel that will stand, all that he purposed, all that he planned, each of us have a part in it coming to pass. So each of us, he, he has assigned each of us a particular portion over that. He's made us responsible to command that and manage that. Y'all see what I'm saying? So I got to take ownership and possess what he's made me responsible for, what he's put me over, and I got to command it. I got to influence the outcomes over what he's put under my charge. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Ah, Jesus. Okay, so now look. See, that's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. We live and order our lives according to what we see and hear from God out of what we get out of that eternal realm not according to what we see and encounter in this natural realm. We don't allow the things in this temporal realm to dictate to us, but we dominate over the temporal realm by looking to the eternal realm and taking possession of what God promised, of, of, of ownership of what he intended, right? And then with that, I command the portion of the temporal realm he gave me to manage. Is that, is that a sea level? Y'all 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 follow what I'm saying? You, 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 you might have trouble here, but it should be bearing you witness here. See, see, see. Ah, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, so Trying to say where, which, which place we should go. <clears throat> go, to, go to Matthew. Go to Matthew 10. I, I was going to go to Mark 11, 22, and we might refer to that. But, but, but first, let's go to Matthew 10. Are you there? Uh, what did I say? Matthew 10? No, I don't want that. Go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. You in Matthew 25? All right, now let me, let, me, let me say it one more time. So when we read this, all right, so remember the former things. For I am God. And beside me, there is no other. There is none like me. Right? I declare the ending from the beginning. Right? And my counsel will stay. In other words, God has declared from the beginning some things concerning each of us. He has declared. He has purposed. He has ordained that each of us would command a portion of the ministry of Jesus Christ. He has declared, he has purpose, he has ordained that each of us sh would oversee and, and have, uh, have, uh, have, that we would oversee, uh, that we would have a part to play in what he ordained coming to pass in the earth. Y'all follow me? He's declared that. And so he's saying, my counsel is going to stand. And all that I've declared, all that I've purposed, all that I've ordained, all that I've intended, that's going to stand. Right? That's the, the, that's, that's the eternal reality that, that, we, that we have our, that, that we have our, our origin, that, that we, original, we came out of that because you're an eternal being, right? You are an eternal being. You came out of eternity, came out of God who is eternal. You are eternal being. You're never going to cease to exist. You have eternal life. Right. 
Now, there is a reality. The reality, there, there, is a, there is an eternal reality that belongs to us that God declared from the foundation for us, the intended and purpose. And part of that reality includes us overseeing or managing or commanding aspects of life in the earth. Y'all follow? Matthew 25, you there? Look at this. Verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them whose goods? His goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man he gave to every man according to his several ability. In other words, he gave what the portion he assigned was determined by the ability of the individual. Jesus, if you will, has gone to a far country. But, but before he left, he called us together and he commissioned us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Right. So in other words, he has if, if he 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 has he has assembled us together. And he has uh, he has assigned us. A portion of his goods. Depend that is determined by our present. Ability. And development of faith to be able to manage. You got what I'm saying? So let's look at finances. The current level of money that you manage, that you possess, that you steward over, that you have at your disposal, is not God withholding more money from us. He has entrusted to us the measure that our present level of understanding will allow us to manage. But the present level, whatever the amount is we're currently managing or stewarding, is nowhere near what he intended. But he's got to perfect our faith to grow us up to come to a place to take ownership and possession of more, of greater. Are you following what I'm saying? God's not going to give us more money. He gave us laws to engage that will cause increase of money. And faithfulness to the laws will produce increase. Not crying out to God, I need more, I need more, I need more. God said, okay, what you doing with what I gave you? I want to raise on my job. Okay. At your current position, you have a job responsibility. You, there are duties that come with that that you are responsible for. What you doing with it? Are you that, are you that dude? You just leaning to the ball show up, and then all of a sudden you, you looking busy? Because, see, then you, you, you doing that as unto, as unto the Lord. I mean, excuse me, you're doing that as unto man. You're trying to please man. You follow what I'm saying? Even though the man didn't catch you, right? He, he didn't catch you, you know, playing and not working. God saw it. 
And even if the man don't see you being diligent, God does. And when you're diligent about doing it as unto him, he's faithful to reward that. So this is what I'm saying. Each of us have been assigned a portion to, to command based on our ability. Ability based on what our present level of understanding, our present development of faith will allow us to manage and command. And God is trying to perfect our faith to remove the hindrances that we can come up in our understanding and our maturity, come up in the development of our faith, that we can command a greater portion and render a greater service for his glory. And at the same time, receive and experience a greater measure of his goodness. Y'all see what I'm saying? All right, how do you do it? Now go, go, go to Mark, 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 uh, Mark 11. How do you do it? Have faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, verse 22, Jesus is responding to Peter's uh, exclamation. Oh, look, master, the tree you cursed it dried up from the root. Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. In other words, that goes back to Hebrews, 11, uh, Hebrews 12, right? Run your race looking away from this natural realm with all of your hope and expectation in Jesus like he's enough. So have faith in God. Make God your source. Not a source, the source. God must be your only source. You got to come to a place in, in walking with God, in your, in your fellowship and communion with God, where you say, okay, God, don't go there. I'm just going to flat out trust you. I'm going to do my utmost to live by what I see you're telling me in your word. And I'm going to trust you to keep your word to me. Psalm 62, verse 5 says, My soul, wait thou only upon God. For all of my hope, my expectation comes from him. He says, wait only on him. Look to him only. Right? You can't run your race trying to look to Jesus and everything that the world is pushing as an answer to. You can't run your race when you're trying to help God out through reasoning and the wisdom of a man. We create Ishmael's that way. No, you run your race looking to Jesus, looking to God as your source, looking to his word as the answer and final authority, and lining up with it. Lining up with it. Are you following what I'm saying? Psalm 62, when one says, my salvation comes from God. He's the source. So have faith in God. Make God. Ultimately, you got, we got to make God's word our source. And then the dual reference to have faith in God is actually have, apply, exercise the faith of God. The faith God dealt you, put your faith to work the same way God puts his faith to work. How? Verse 23. By saying to the mountain, believing in your heart and not doubting, that what you say will come to pass and you will have what you say. The mountains represent anything of the enemy that opposes you in walking out God's plan, you are not to go around the mountain. You're not to sidestep the opposition of the enemy. You're not to turn tail and run from the enemy. You're not to duck your head and wait it out. You are to speak to the mountain. You are to issue a command. You are to say out of your mouth what you heard God tell you to say, what was inspired by God, by the Spirit of God, within your bosom, within your spirit. Speak that out of your mouth, believing that what you say shall come to pass. And as a result, you will have the thing you're saying. You will influence the outcomes of the part God made you responsible for. My, my wife often is sharing her day with me and stuff that come up on her job and 
the challenges and things of this nature, and different coworkers and their attitudes and their fears and their anxieties and their competition and stuff like that. Well, she's there seeking, she, yeah, I sought the Lord. I asked God this. Because why? Because she's doing this unto the Lord. God gives her what to say, what to do. She acts on it. She walks it out. Boom, she's coming back. Maybe that, that same day, maybe that day, guess what? This thing worked out. God did it. So the part she's responsible for, she's managing, she's commanding, she's influencing the outcomes, and God's getting the glory, and she's getting the gain. And the lives that that's designed to touch are being blessed. Y'all follow what I'm saying? That's how it should be in our direct, in our personal lives, in our immediate family and household, right? We're to influence the outcomes of what's happening in our world or in what's happening in that which God put us over. Y'all follow me? All right, so this is what you got to get. This is what you got to get. This is what you got to get. If you believe in your heart that God has planted you in this house, made you a part of this ministry. See, he plants members in the body as it pleases him. So if, he, if you believe he planted you here, you're planted here, A, to get the benefit of the feeding of his word that happens here, but also... To utilize your giftings and your talents to contribute to the vision that he has for this house. So if you're planted here, you and I are partners together with the portion God has given me to oversee and manage. We're partners together in it as part of the same ministry. <laughs> All right, I'll pull off on that for a minute. Let you, let you. Need to go back home and seek the Lord. Lord, what, what's my part? What's my part? If you ain't sure that I'm your pastor, ask the Lord. Lord, is He my pastor? Am I where I'm supposed to be? And if you and if you and if you truly believe that 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 I'm not, then you 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 know you you, you need to find where you're supposed to be. But if you believe I am, then stop playing. And let's get this thing done. Amen. Let's jump on in here. Amen. Let's 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 get this thing done. Cause 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 we got some territories to command. First and foremost, we got to influence the outcome God intended for this ministry. For every household that's tied to the ministry. For the, for the lives of those that God raised this ministry up to impact. Uh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, 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 look at Romans 10. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close here. Romans 10. I got up to Romans 10 Wednesday. Look at Romans 10. See, see, see. And I had some statements, and I know I, don't, I probably ain't come close to them. I don't know. I did. I did it. Okay. All right. So, but 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 here's one I want you to get. I want you to get this statement. Uh, so, here's here's this truth that we're receiving, that that we're sitting under, that we're that we're being ministered right now, right? This, this is the truth of the nature. This is the whole truth of the thing right here. It's not enough. Uh, it's, it's just believing 
God's word is not enough. It's got to be acted on. We can say amen all day long because we believe it. But until we act on it, our faith does not bear fruit. It doesn't produce any results. It's not enough that this word is believed only. It's got to be acted upon. And, 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 and if not, if I'm not willing to act on it, I can say I believe it. But if I'm not willing to act on it, I'm not profiting from what I claim to believe. It ain't bearing no fruit. Now, 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 what keeps us from acting on it, right? Uh, fear, primarily it's fear. Fear or unbelief, right? What's the answer to unbelief? The word. Jesus, when he was in Mark 6, and he encountered their unbelief, and they, and, and, and they were offended at him, the Bible, he, could do no, he couldn't do no mighty works there. They were familiar with him. They, they took offense. They were offended. He could do no mighty works. On best, at best, he, he laid hands on a few sick folk. But what was his answer? He went about teaching. That's what I'm doing. I'm teaching you the word right now to help us overcome and drive out unbelief. To get rid of the hindrances to our faith, to perfect our faith, to properly grow and develop our faith so we can take ownership and possess our part of what God planned, his counsel for what he declared. Right? Now, here's the, here's the thing. You in Romans 10? Uh... In order to grow in faith, we must have value for God's word and honor for the preacher that he sends. Do you hear what I said? In order to grow in faith, if I'm going to grow in faith, I got to value the word. And, and, and listen, I can't claim I to value the word if I don't have honor for the one he sent with the word. All right, Moses preached the word, all right, but they, they, they weren't profited that heard it because they didn't mix faith with it. Well, why didn't they mix faith with it? I believe because they didn't honor Moses. Are you following me? Ah. Uh. All right, so listen. Jesus. You're in Romans 10, right? So what I'm what I'm trying to illustrate here, I'm gonna read these verses, we're gonna be done. Is that if 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 we're gonna if we're gonna take possession and ownership of our part, of our part in causing what God purposed to come to pass in the earth, I must value. God's word. Amen. I must attach value to it, right? Now, now, now look. <clears throat> I, I cannot claim to have value for his word and have no value or esteem or honor for the one he sends to preach it. And if I have no honor or esteem for the one he sends to preach it, Ultimately, I have no honor or esteem for God who did the sending. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Matthew 10 and 40, Jesus said, if, if you believe, if you receive me, you receive who sent me. But the flip side is, if you reject me, you reject who sent me. God dealt with that with, with, with uh, what is his name? Uh, in in First Samuel uh, eight, they 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 wanted to, to God said they didn't reject you they rejected me. He was trying to tell them to to go with the with the with the uh, with the judge. They wanted a king like everybody else. He said he said don't worry about it. They didn't reject you. They rejected me because you represent me. See you 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 can disagree with me and all that. I can disagree with you. That and cool. We have a kumbaya and we still love each other. But we shouldn't get mad at each other because we see things differently. 
right? Now, if we're just discussing opinions, we can agree to disagree. But if I'm giving you this book, now it ain't okay to disagree with the book. That, that's another word for that. It's called rebellion. Romans 10, you there? Yeah. All right, so we want to grow in faith. Obviously, if you look at verse 17, right, what does it tell us? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Now, I mentioned that a little bit Wednesday. Hearing, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith don't come by hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when you hear the word, right, you hear the word, but faith didn't come just because you heard me say it. Faith comes as when you hear me say it and you hear the anointed utterances spoken by the Holy Ghost to you when you hear me say it. You can hear me say, by his stripes you were healed. But did you hear, did the Spirit of God utter that and reveal that to you? Because faith comes by that, by that hearing. Not just hearing the word. But the hearing that comes from hearing the word. Yeah, yeah. See, Psalm 62 and 11 says, God says, once have I spoke, but twice have I heard. See, see, God is, God is speaking. When I, when, when I hear this word, I'm hearing God speak. He spoke once. But I hear twice. What is, what is, what's, I'm, not only am I hearing the word, but if I listen, I'll hear that anointed utterance. By the Holy Spirit bearing me witness inside. That's true. And when you hear that, faith came. But faith don't come if I have no value for the word. I can't hear an anointed utterance by the Spirit of God concerning the word if I don't value the word. Right? All right. So now let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. How am I going to hear the word? Look at verse number... <sighs> 12, yeah, look at 12. But there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. We could say there's no difference between the Catholic and the Protestant. We could say there's no difference between the black and the white. We could say there's no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, with, uh, there's no difference between the male and the female. All, whatever area Satan can try to bring division, try to point out something, God loves everybody. Every group, every race, every gender. Right? Now look. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You don't call on nobody you don't believe. You're never going to ask God to do something for you you don't believe he will. Not unless you're just being religious in front of some people. Are you following me? How and how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now listen, listen, not just a preacher. How shall they preach? Uh, except they be sent. I ain't talking about nobody. I ain't, I ain't even got nobody in particularly in my mind when I say this. But some preachers went. They weren't sent. God showed me in an open vision that he had sent me to be the pastor of this church. And I ain't got time to go into all of it right now. But he sent me to be the pastor of the church, not the pastor of the building, but the pastor of the people who be the church. Amen. To preach the gospel of the kingdom so that you may hear and believe and have the wherewithal, the faith to call upon him 
him who is rich to all that do call upon him. Are you understand what I'm saying? And I don't know if we properly understand the value of the gift that, that the pastor is. When my family was abducted, and I called my pastor, my father of the faith, and he prayed and declared, everything he prayed and declared, was done that day. The counsel that I've received, the word I sit on when he preaches, all, all of that is, is, is growing me up. Are you following what I'm saying? And when, 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 when you are facing hell on earth, there is no voice more valuable and beneficial to you than the one God gave you. Amen. Not, 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 not the former President Obama. If, if President Obama was announced he was making a tour here on Sunday morning, so a lot of folk would go, go, go hear him rather than come to church. Not saying you would, but a lot of folk would. Obama ain't praying for you. I ain't, I ain't knocking the president. I ain't knocking the, 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 the President Trump, President Biden. I ain't knocking none of them, you know. But you know what? They benefit from our prayers. You, you, you're not benefiting from them being in office. They get the benefit of your prayers while they're in office. But who's in office don't determine the quality of your life. Amen. Love you. Let's stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am so happy. God stretch me. I'm going to stretch you. I follow God. You follow me as I follow him. <laughs> There's some things the Lord been talking to me about. I can't talk to you about yet. Because I got to get a proper enough handle on it to be able to, to minister it to you. And I got to get some stuff in you to, so that when you hear it, you can receive it. Because if I, if, I, if I said to you right now what God been talking to me about for the last three days, it would choke you. Got to give you some gravy first. But we're going to get that. We are getting that. Glory to God. Father, let's come on. Let's just bless the Lord. Father, we bless you today. Come on, praise him. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him thanksgiving. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being the perfecter of our faith. For being so loving, so kind, so gracious, so patient, Lord. So faithful, so good, so merciful. And because of who you are, we're not consumed, Father. We're alive and well. We're prosperous and successful, victorious and triumphant. For such is what you declared from the beginning. And it stands even to this day. Regardless of what's going on, it shall stand. And we are taking our place. We're possessing our part to manage and command our world in Jesus' name. So, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over your people. I speak life and favor to every household, to every person represented here. 
I put an end to Satan's plans. I cancel them out. I call them of no effect in the name of Jesus. I say blessings and favor abound profusely in the name of Jesus. Even this day, money cometh in the name of Jesus Christ. Favor surrounding you like a shield. God influencing the hearts of others to deal, to deal favorably with you. To ignore, to overturn, to change laws, rules, and policies on your behalf to serve your interests. Because that's just the favor of God. So Father, we love you, we bless you, we give you praise, glory, and honor that all is well. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.